When you're sketching out your ideas for a new product, oftentimes it's easiest to draw it in side view. In this video, I'm going to go over what I consider like thumbnail side view sketches and then translate that into a perspective drawing and then ultimately render that drawing. My name is Eric Strebel. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. For this digital sketch, I'm using Autodesk Sketchbook Pro on an iPad 12.9 inch. I've long sold my Cintiq and I do all my sketching digitally on an iPad these days. What you see me sketching here are basic concepts and ideas. I'm sketching empathically, loosely from my shoulder, using my entire arm, trying to create a form that I like for this cordless hot glue gun. The first three sketches were just vomiting ideas out of my brain, trying to come up with some sort of a form, getting rid of the things that I don't like, and this last sketch is much more in line with what I think I want my solution to be a little more simplistic, a little bit more modern, very product design, super simple, uh, basic shapes. And I'm just trying to work out the basic proportions, the overall look and feel and how things will roughly kind of go together. I label them and I give it a title. Sketchbook Pro has a grid system that you can set the, your vanishing points for your perspective in three-point perspective. And I use that to create a basic box that has the proportions of the cordless hot glue gun that I want. And then I draw my object inside of that box. Ultimately, I remove that box so that I can focus on the form of the hot glue gun. I'm still sketching pretty loose here, a little tighter. Um, I'm cleaning up my lines as I go along, and that's the beautiful thing about digital sketching is it's pretty easy to clean things up, redraw on another layer, and then erase the stuff below it until you get it just right. You can see I often go back, redraw the lines to get them to have the feel and the character that I want them to have. And again, that's what I really like about digital sketching is that you can go back and adjust these things sort of infinitely. Next, I'm going to lay in a very basic shadow. You see me put in some basic ellipses and it's a super representational shadow that would be cast just to help anchor the product down on the ground. I also add in a temperature sensor as I feel like this hot glue gun would really benefit from having some sort of a temperature set up to let you know when it's ready to be used. It also needs a power button to turn it on and off. And I put my name inside the grip. I find it very helpful to step away from your drawing when you're sketching, whether it's on paper or digitally. And then when you come back, for me, it's oftentimes very obvious things that need to be adjusted. And in this case, some of the perspective needs to be fixed up here in the top, the mechanicals that push the glue stick forward into the heating element. Some of the details need to be adjusted and I continue to fix things like the power button here, trying to get the correct power symbol, adjusting your text and putting that on a separate layer is a great thing. So you can come back and change that. I feel the proportions of the battery and the bottom part of the grip here aren't quite right. And so I want to change that and fix it before I get to doing the final render, because if you don't fix it now, no matter how good the rendering is, if you don't, make it right it won't look good i feel like the front of the gun needs to 
have a little bit more visual weight here so it needs to be a little beefier a little meatier this is also where the heating element would be located and I also throw in another detail now I'm putting in the split line for the two halves of the part this shows that it's an injection molded plastic part and how the part would be split out so really nice to communicate that to potentially your engineering team so they can understand how this product is going to be made and just to include that much more information in your rendering All right, let's add some value to this product. So value change equals form change. I've talked about it in the past. The way that I do my digital renderings in general is by doing everything in grayscale. So there's a couple benefits to this. You do everything in grayscale. If it looks good and it reads good in grayscale, then adding color is not going to be a problem it's going to be very easy what i then do is everything on one layer for a certain color and that way i can just come back in and you'll see me do it here in a little bit and then change the color value in the grays to make the adjustment for that part so right now here we're just adding some value for the nozzle it's a metal nozzle. Maybe it's powder coated or painted with a high temperature paint. Uh, and I'm just adding in some of the reflections. It's a little shinier than the rest of the product. And so I set all the gloss level and everything when I do my grayscale value painting. And then I can just adjust the color afterwards. I do a little gradient here for the temperature sensor. The benefit of adjusting your grayscale here is that you can make it any color you want. You can explore all sorts of different colors and even change it at a later date if you do it all in grays. Wonderful system, works out really great for me. Let's make some adjustments, add some highlights into the nozzle and on some of the edges of the plastic and we're almost done let's add a title let's make a few more adjustments put some color into the text and clean up a few little perspective things I can always continue to make changes the longer I stare at the rendering but at some point you just gotta stop Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.